Hello everyone, I'm Celine Diaz and I'm the Qantas Family Chair of UNLV Circle K International this year. And I've been part of Circle K for two years and I have accomplished many things while being a Kiwanis Family Chair. I have done two key to colleges where the first one, 14 members of the key club attended, so I wasn't satisfied and I decided to make a larger scale key to college where 90 plus key clubbers came and about half of the club supported on that day. So I'm very proud of that event. I also ran three Relay for Lives where seven members of our home club each attended to support and I also run my own committee, which is still active, has still active members, and we are very dedicated. Right now we are working on the Flapjack fundraiser, which we have gone to at least three Kiwanis meetings so far, and we plan on attending more. I am a very enthusiastic leader. I am very approachable, and I'm ambitious and very determined. I accomplished most of the goals I set out to do when I first started in the A-Board. I know what it takes to be on the A-Board committee, and as a committee chair, I know what we need to improve on, what I think we should get accomplished more, what more we need to accomplish next year. Um, I believe that anyone can make plans, but it's about implementing, no, implementing those plans that are key. And I have shown that I was able to implement those goals that I set out to do. My vision is I want to keep my chairs happy, my committee chairs, and I want to I want to have better communication with them. I want to make sure that they feel as much satisfied as I feel at the end of my turn, that they got the goals that they, they accomplished the goals that they set out to do. I want more bonding time so that we feel that we can lean on each other and that we're a family and that we support each other in everything that we do. I want to um, have monthly meetings and agendas and get things accomplished. And I believe in motivation is key the time for your speech. And then we'll go into the Q&A. Yeah. Questions? I'm sorry, did you catch? What was your specific platform? Um, my platform was that I want to be able to have an aid that accomplishes what they set out to do and have better communication. Right. Uh, being VPA, there are some times when your chairs will not get back to you. What are you going to do in that situation? First, I will ask around to my other committee chairs if they have heard from the person. And if anyone has, I, wonder, I would like to ask them what they talked to them about. And also, if I couldn't get a hold of them, I'm sure I could find them through someone, a close friend maybe, or even if I have to call or bother someone about bothering them about what they need to accomplish, making sure I get to them. Kind of along the lines of what Brandon was saying, um, what would you do in this um, in the case that um, they your your A board isn't um, fulfilling their duties or not turning in things on, on time? If my A board isn't fulfilling their duty, I would talk to them one on one. I'd approach them first of all and um, kind of pull them aside, not make a scene. Make sure I understand what they're going through. Ask them if they have any problems and offer my help to them if they need any help with anything I'm there to lean on. And also, if they don't feel like they can accomplish the duties that are outlined with these committee chairs, to give it to someone else who can maybe accomplish those goals and step down. Because if they can't accomplish it, there's someone else out there who's more enthusiastic about the job and feels that they can do a better job. All right, so this is a situational question. The new Kiwanis family chair finds itself in a difficult situation misunderstanding with an YPO officer involving a careless remark that was taken as an insult to YPO. How do you deal with this situation? First, it's a Kiwanis family chair. It is partly my, um, I'm the vice president of the administration, I'm supposed to be looking after them, but also I feel that it's a bigger issue, so we have to bring it up to our e-board and we have to make sure that we all communicate and understand what exactly happened at that time of the event. And once we get to understand what happened at that time of the event, then we start to plan our action and not be too hasty <coughs> about we, what we do. We must consider um, the other side of the situation, so ask others who are also on the outside who have maybe seen what happened because we don't want to get confused and end up taking the wrong step. Mike. All right. <coughs> <laughs>
So how would you build leadership in your chairs? Leadership in my chairs. I know that everybody wants, has that leadership quality in them. They just need a little push to get there. So um, an anecdote I have is with my Kiwanis family committee. We did Key to College and I had it, the chairs open and I elected someone who I thought maybe could do the job and I knew that he wanted to be a leader and show his skills. So by just giving that person a little push to, to that, he was able to accomplish those goals. And I feel that if, if, yeah. Oh, okay. That's it, sorry. Um, situational again. If you cannot fulfill a chair position, do you feel like you're up to the task? Like say, like if you're not suited for like webmaster or something? If I'm not suited for webmaster, I would try the best I can. Honestly, I'm a very amb ambitious person, and I would do, I would research, I would do whatever is possible. Um, I have people outside of Circle K that can help me, and I would be able to accomplish stuff by asking for help around. I have a lot of support that I could use, and they would be there for me. Hi, Celine. Uh, what chair positions would you add or remove? Honestly, I feel like the positions that Emily has chose are perfect. I was considering maybe bunching together the fundraising chairs, but I think they're perfectly fine with internal and external fundraising. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you.